Intake manifolds. just because I had the chance to check out the Skunk 2 center feed manifold. I didn't test it on my engine, obviously, because it's out of the car. But a while back, I did do um, a back-to-back -back test, thanks to uh, JTRAN Motorsports and Busy using the Skunk 2 side feed intake manifold versus my K2 side feed manifold. From the results, basically the K2 manifold made more power from start to finish, all the way to 9,000 RPM on my engine. Then we also tried out the Skunk 2 side feed and my K2 side feed on another high compression 2.3 liter build and it was the same results. K2 made more power from start to finish all the way up to 10,500 RPM on that engine. The best thing I can say about the Skunk 2 side feed, um, it was CNC ported by 4 piston and um, that port job really did a good job with it because you could tell by the graph it was a much smoother line than the K2 line was. And according to JTRAN, he said that the um, tuning the Skunk 2 manifold was a little bit easier as well. And it's not to say that like the Skunk 2 side feed um, ultra race manifold is a bad manifold or anything. It just kind of has its place on certain engines versus mine. One of the most common questions I get asked about this is um, if someone should run this type of manifold on their car, whether it be the Skunk 2 ultra race manifold, the K2 manifold, something from Magnus Motorsports, um, the Gato Manifolds. The first order of advice I can give you is read the product description closely, very closely. Like very, very closely, like closer than I am to the lens right now. These large manifolds, like when you put it on a smaller engine or something that's like a stock internal, just bolt-on setup and you slap one of these big manifolds on there, your engine's not even pulling that much air through it to make use of this thing. So you end up putting out the same sort of output you would get from something like a RBC or RRC or even one of those OEM manifolds ported. So then it doesn't really warrant having such a huge expensive intake manifold on your car when you're not even moving air through your engine. If you just got small cams or something like that, stick with a RBC or RRC. Have that thing ported out and just go from there. I mean, I've seen an RBC ported still support an engine to make over 300 horsepower, you know, on E85. So even those smaller manifolds can actually do it for you. If you're turbocharged or uh, supercharged, something like that, then the shape of these manifolds don't play that big of a part anymore. When it's NA, you know, every little detail counts when it's all motors. So that's when you want to take all that, those details into consideration. Like hell, I've seen an RBC on a turbocharged car make over 800 horsepower. So when it comes to a turbocharged engine, I think most of this information I'm spitting out probably won't apply to you. Here's a closer look at the K-Tune intake manifold runners. They're a little bit fatter closer to the head and then they shrink up coming to the CNC velocity sack they have here. And these runners are pretty long and they end up perfectly even with the start of the plenum right here. And this compared to the Skunk 2 runners, as you can see these are much fatter a lot thicker runners, but that's looking from the outside. When you look on the inside, okay, yeah, they're still bigger. But yeah, the difference between these two is you see how the end of the runner in the velocity stack section actually protrudes into the plenum for the Skunk 2 one. So you'd need like a plenum spacer to even get the same sort of volume that you get from this plenum on the K2 manifold. That's one other thing that probably contributed to a lot of the other extra power that was shown between my graph and the other high compression um, stroke build. Here's a back to back comparison of the two manifolds. Um, the Skunk 2 manifold, I believe, is like a three liter plenum, maybe three and a half, something like that. Whereas K-Tune is four points something or another, I'd have to look online to get the actual specs for you. I'll put the information in the description below. One thing to consider when you're looking at the pricing between these two intake manifolds or these two companies or any of the large intake manifolds, the majority of the large manifolds actually come with the manifold itself and the fuel rail included. Whereas Skunk 2, all you're gonna get is just the manifold by itself. 
And like I said, the Skunk 2 manifold has a smaller plenum, so if you want the same kind of plenum volume you could get on, say, the K-Tune or Gato manifold or something like that, or something from Hayward, uh, you have to consider that you'd have to buy those extra plenum spacers as well as a fuel rail to go with your Skunk 2 manifold. So the Skunk 2 price actually seems really cheap when you just look at the initial price because you're just getting the manifold. But once you realize that you have to buy everything else to try to make it equal or on par to the other bigger manifolds, then you see where the price difference is or the lack of a price difference anyway. I did it a while back, but I priced out a Skunk 2 intake manifold with their composite fuel rail that goes with it and a plenum spacer to make it the same or near the same volume as the K-Tune one. And once you put all those prices together, the Skunk 2 manifold cost more than the K-Tune one did. And that was based off of vendor pricing versus retail pricing on this one. So once you consider stuff like that, then you really see where your money's being spent. They kind of get you with the marketing when they just advertise just the intake manifold by itself, knowing that you need more than that just to get your car rolling. OCD guy when it comes to his car with a CRX and uh, what he did when he got the Skunk 2 Ultra Race manifold is that he took off the plenum and he sanded all this smooth so when you buy yours don't expect it to look nice and shiny like this and smooth and everything he actually went the extra mile to do this himself the original casting on the Skunk 2 manifolds is pretty rough I mean it's not something that'll kill you this is just a little bit extra that he did to try to squeeze out every bit of power that he can for me, I really don't care. I'm not that picky about my stuff. But it looks nice though. So it's something you might want to consider. I hope this quick little rundown on the intake manifolds, or these two at least, kind of gives you a better idea of what you're looking at or what to consider when you're trying to choose a large intake manifold for your K20 or K24 build. This is just my personal knowledge, my personal experience. I mean, take it for what it is. You know, I'm not some professional or whatever, so you don't have to take my word for it. Do what you do. See you in the next.